Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm your host, Snow and Camera Guy, and in this episode, we're gonna be talking about the Sony Alpha A6300. Now, the first thing I wanna say before we even get started on this video is that I'm only gonna be focusing on the video features of this camera, not on the photographic features. If you're looking for information about that, please jump to another review or video. Uh, I only wanna discuss the things I'm, I'm specifically interested in about this camera. But I've got nine things that I wanna talk about with this camera. Let's get started. Number one is 4K video recording. What's really cool about this camera is that it does record at 4K at 30 frames per second, but you're getting a full pixel readout from 6K down to 4K. In other words, you're gonna get really sharp and crisp video. Number two, they finally added a built-in mic jack, so now you can use your microphones to record uh, with the Alpha 6300. And there was actually an interview with Kenta Hanjo from Sony who stated that this was a feature that users were asking for and they actually threw it into the camera body, which is really great. I know a lot of folks say that using an external recorder for audio is really good to do, but sometimes you just want to record straight into the camera. In many cases, I like to do that myself. Uh, it makes things a lot easier and simplifies post-production. Number three, Sony put in the S-Log3 picture profile that was it's available in the Sony a7s II, uh, which is a really great added benefit. And they also added camera assist display, which will make it easier for you to record in S-Log3. Number four, for those of you always asking for more dynamic range, Sony's giving this camera 14 stops at S-Log3. Number five, they included slow motion at five times, which is basically 120 frames per second at 1080p. From what it looks like, there's a slight tiny crop in the camera, which is fantastic. When you compare it to the Sony a7S II, which has a significant crop when you're doing 120 frames per second on that camera. Number six, hybrid autofocus has been improved. So that's gonna be a really great thing for those of you who don't like to manually pull focus. Number seven, slight sensor improvement. Um, it doesn't have the BSI sensor, but I'm hoping that there is probably gonna be a slight improvement in the higher ISO performance in this camera. Number eight, I think this is something that people are gonna start talking about is the fact that you can get a speed booster that's gonna make this APS-C camera perform similar to full frame. So you're gonna get a stop of light increase and you're gonna get the full frame field of view. So it's kind of like a mini A7R2, A7S2 when it comes to video. So it's gonna be a very interesting camera uh, when it comes out. Number nine is the price. It's coming out at 1,000 US dollars. I know there's a lot of clamor about the fact that um, it's several hundred dollars more than the previous generation when it was released, but you gotta consider the fact that Sony is put, putting in packing and features that other competitors don't have. You got a small form factor body. It has really great autofocusing capabilities for photo uh, photography, 4K features, high speed recording. Uh, it's gonna make it a really nice overall small package camera with a lot of great features. And so $1,000 seems to be fair when it comes to this price. So let me know what you think down below, what you think, if that is something that you would even consider. Now let me go ahead and talk about what's not so hot about this camera. Number one, it is the lack of inbuilt stabilization that the Sony a7 II line of cameras have. I think we were all kind of banking on it having that feature, but it's not necessarily a deal breaker. Uh, again, this camera is sort of like a mini a7S II, a7R II. Using a speed booster, you're gonna get that full frame uh, effect on there. So I still think this is a really great camera to pick up. Number two, I am concerned about the lower battery life on this camera. The A6000 series does typically have poor battery life. What I'm really wondering is whether or not this camera can record while being externally charged via USB or something with an external power pack. Number three is the overheating issues. The A6000 was kind of plagued with some of that. So hopefully Sony's resolved that in this camera. That's it guys, that's all I've got. If you have any questions or comments or additional information about the camera, go ahead and post it down below. I will be picking up this camera alongside with the A6000 and doing some sort of full review and comparison. Um, so if you are interested in seeing that video, go ahead and subscribe so you can find when that video comes out. And finally, if you did like this particular video, go ahead and give it a like. It really helps me and I will catch you guys on the next video. Now, if you did miss the last video I did about cameras, you can go ahead and find those videos over here. And again, I'll see you later. Bye.